Okay, so let's take a look at how we can utilize schoolwork as a really nice workflow for your students um, and some of the updates which has happened fairly recently, uh, which might make it even easier for you to use this in your classroom. So let's go ahead and open schoolwork. You'll see that if you've used schoolwork at all before, there's a, a new design, new layout. We now have this panel on the left-hand side, which just gives me really, really quick access to my classes and my library and then you know when I go into each one of these I have that different view of those elements you know within my classes it's a lot more colorful easier to kind of navigate around um, I feel also along the bottom um, we have our handouts view which gives me all the handouts I also have a students view which we'll talk about a little bit later where I can actually sort of highlight each individual student and have a look at their own progress against any activity so how do we get started with schoolwork? Well, the first thing we're going to need to do is create a class. So in order to create a class, we're just going to tap um, here on the icon and type in the name of the class. So we'll just call this uh, schoolwork class. Um, and then we're going to choose the teachers that are going to be in it. Now, this is just going to be myself, so I'm just going to make sure that I'm selected. And then we would go ahead and choose the students. Now, something that's really clever here is that I might not have this as a class for the whole group of students. I might want to have specific classes for a specific set of students in the class. It could be that there are students with individual needs. It could be that there are students working in a slightly different way, and I can create that quite easily. So I'd tap on the students, I would search for those students um, within the list, um, and they would come up. I could just choose them and create that in the group. The next thing then, and this is, it, it feels like it doesn't really matter, but actually when you start to look at your screen, having different icons, different colours is something which can really help you navigate things around. Now, depending on whether you're working in a primary sector, secondary sector, further ed or higher ed, you might have multiple classes that are all in the same year group, multiple classes that are all under the same subject. So actually, by being able to choose something more unique for each of your classes is going to help them stand out um, in your My Classes sidebar. So I'm going to go ahead and use this red icon here for my class. And you'll see that instantly then creates that class. Now, the next thing to do is take a look at how to create those handouts. So I've got the panel over on the right hand side. I, I know this is my schoolwork class because it identifies that at the top. I'm just going to tap on that create new handout. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I give the handout a name. I can choose to have a deadline on or off. Now this is quite nice. It might be that I want this to be something a little bit more structured, a little bit more formal. It could just be something that I want students to just go away and think about um, and have go at and not necessarily be rigid on when they submit it back to me, more of an open task activities. In this case, I'll leave the deadline on and then I'll just choose the date. Um, I'll just set it for a couple of days, a couple of months time. So once that's set, the next thing to do is you have the option to add in the activities, the content, the files, all of those things. And we can have a look at each one of these and what they look like. We can add in that app activity, a document from my device, photos or videos that might be used as inspiration, the scan documents, which is a really nice feature because it allows you to take something that you might already have in terms of a paper uh, version, scan it and then turn that digital. Obviously, in the current climate with remote learning, blended learning and, and COVID, that's a really, really nice way to take any existing resources you might have in analogue form and turn them into digital form to get them to your students. Obviously, we can add in links as well if I want to send them to something and then we can request that they hand something in. So let's take a look at each one of these and what they look like. If I choose the app activity, it's going to open all of the apps that are on my device that allow student progress to be monitored. So you can see this icon, that the little um, line going up and down, shows me that I can use these to, to set an activity. Now I'm going to jump into Kahoot because this is a really, really nice to, one to demonstrate it with. Um, and I can see all of the different activities maybe that I've recently used, my favourites, um, and also you know go into more detail. I'm just going to choose uh, some of my recently viewed ones. And let's have a look at something that I use with my students around electric circuits. I'm going to select that and then tap done. And that's created that Kahoot activity quiz within my activity here. Now I might also ask them to look at a diagram that I've created on circuits. 
and let's say that I want them to have a look at uh, this series circuit and I've just simply added that activity in as well. I could take photos, obviously we've talked about scanning documents and some of my students might actually struggle with some of this concept that I've shown and I want to push them for some additional reading. So let's say that I'm going to go to a link, go to a web page, it's going to ask me for that web page. Now I'm going to just do a bit of a shortcut here, I'm going to go split screen, I'm going to drag that icon, go split screen and then just do a quick search within Safari for Science Circuits, Key Stage 2, there we go. And I think this BBC Bite Size um, thing is really, really useful. Just give that extra um, bit of information for the students. So I'm going to select in the search bar, tap and hold so I can move it, and then I'm just going to drag that across and then add that to my document. So I'm going back to full screen, tap Add, and you'll see that that has now added that link in below. Now the final thing to do, and a really important thing, because otherwise it doesn't give any context to this, is to give that information to the students in that description. So I'll just say, can you uh, have a go at the quiz? And if you get stuck, review the support web page. When complete, Keynote and attempt to create your own animation. So there we go, done. Everything's created in the handout and then I just need to tap on that share and that's going to send it out to all the students that are in that class. So they will see that handout um, and they will get a notification on their device as that appears. So there we go, so there's the handout created on the device. It's just going through the final publishing um, processes to be able to send it out to those students. And the students will get the notification to see that this is now on their devices as an activity that they need to complete. So if I now go into that, you can then see that there, I have a different pane now to, in order to, to sort of look at student progress. At the top, obviously, is my activity with the dates. I have this all activities page uh, panel where I can see who's done the activity, how much of it is complete, how much do I need to review. On the right hand side, some really, really nice rich data in terms of time spent doing the activity for the individual student um, and whether they've completed it. And then I can see the individual activities along the bottom. So I have that Kahoot activity and I know, obviously at this point, no one has started it. But I can just simply go through each one of those things to see what and what hasn't been done. And obviously, from that point of view, if a student hasn't done something, I have the opportunity to send them a message. And this is really nice. Depending on your setup within your Apple School Manager, it, it links me directly to send messages to those students. I can do this um, via text message. I can also do this via FaceTime, depending on your settings. So again, really, really simple ways to conduct this. But as always with Apple, the privacy is the absolutely key to everything you're doing. So this data is just seen by me as the teacher and seen by the student at the other end and isn't stored anywhere for anybody else to use, which actually makes it a really, really nice feature. So there we go. We just kind of scraped the surface of what you can do with schoolwork and the new updates. Uh, please do leave some comments in the section below. I'd love to know how you're getting on with using it in your own workflow.